Um, so this presentation is going to be different than many of the others because this is not a, 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 research, a, a research monograph. It's more of a informational overview of uh, many of the faculty driven projects that are that are going on at our college. Uh, this is definitely not meant to be inclusive. There's a lot more going on, uh, but I thought that this would be a, a kind of a way to also celebrate the work of many of my colleagues and in hopes of maybe spurring them to come to future ones of these to talk about their work. The, uh, so I just want to go over briefly um, our, our mission statement at, at College of Menominee Nation, which was actually uh, fairly recently revised slightly. So uh, we basically have a, a three-pronged mission here. Um, that it infuses learning with American Indian culture, prepares students for leadership careers and advanced studies in a multicultural world. Uh, and the college commits to research and promotion, perpetuation and nurturance of American Indian language and scholarship. Uh, so over the, over the past several years, uh, we have uh, recommitted really to this, uh, to this um, mission. Uh, and the, we have also, uh, come up with new a new values statement, uh, and I'm not going to read this this all to you. Um, but we have we have we have tried to engage in our curriculum and our co course offerings and our our relationships with the community uh, these these various values. Um, and just as a related note, uh, the faculty have recently completely revised our general education outcomes to better reflect these particular values. Uh, and it's sort of important, important to note, um, several, several of us, including myself, uh, presented at uh, one of these conferences back in 2018. Uh, and our college has changed leadership a couple of times since then. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, our new President uh, Chris Caldwell and our interim uh, chief academic officer Geraldine Santapa are in attendance. So I'm kind of like, oh my God, I better get this right. Uh, so we really have tried to focus on a greater commitment to, to centering the college's mission in our new projects and programs. And again, that this, this presentation highlights specific faculty driven initiatives uh, to foster and enhance place based learning and community building. Uh, at the college. Again, there, there are many more uh, projects going on, both faculty driven and otherwise. And again, this is not an all inclusive list. Uh, and at the end of the presentation, I have a list of uh, places where you can get more information on the various uh, things that I have uh, gone over in this presentation. Okay. So just as, as, a, summer, uh, as a summary, um, back in 2018, uh, myself, Dr. Dennis Vickers and Christopher Caldwell, uh, we all discussed uh, CMN projects and programs uh, during that faculty research convening. Uh, Dr. Vickers and myself uh, discussed the uh, bachelor's program in integrative studies and sustainability, which was at that time in the planning stages uh, and that uh, program was actually launched via a SEEDS grant from the AICF. So we've been very thankful for uh, the AICF for uh, helping us develop this, this program. Uh, and finally, this past summer, uh, the ISS program has been fully approved by both HLC and the Department of Education for uh, offering. So we are hoping to actually finally launch this program in the spring of 2022. Um, and in 2019, uh, the college hired faculty member, uh, Dr. Frank Kutka, to develop a bachelor's program in sustainable agriculture. Uh, and this program has also been developed and it was also fully approved uh, for offering, and that should be summer 2021. Uh, so the college will be ready to offer these two brand new programs uh, within the next academic year. Uh, and in addition to these programs, 
um, our Dr. Lucy Fensel, who is a bio and phys professor, uh, heads our efforts in the Tiny Earth program, uh, which involves um, helping students identify micro, uh, microorganisms, helpful microorganisms, especially antibiotics in soil. Uh, and I'll get into a little more detail about that. Uh, CMN has been involved with that program since 2018. Um, since 2016, um, our faculty member, Ryan Wynn, who is theater faculty, uh, has helped with, uh, with the help of student researchers and community to revise to revive the traditional Menominee theater pageants. And again, I'll be getting into more detail about that. And also finally, um, the Liberal Studies Department of which I'm a member are currently engaged in redesigning our program to better foster uh, place-based learning and community building. Uh, and so we recently completed our comprehensive program re review. Uh, and so based on our findings, from that, uh, that is, we have decided on some directions. So that'll be, I'll get into more detail about that as well. Okay, so I want to first discuss the integrative studies program. Uh, and these, these are the six current program outcomes. Uh, by the end of that, students will be able to evaluate opinions for validity, clarity, and objectivity to create oral effective oral written and multimedia communications, compare knowledge, behaviors, and attitudes based on cultural underpinnings to integrate knowledge of various types and sources, to develop practical improvements to real world situations, and to synthesize holistic interpretations of complex systems. Um, and for us, one of the, the most important things about these program outcomes is uh, that Dr. Vickers helped to organize a community advisory board uh, for the development of this program. And these program outcomes were designed with close consultation uh, with this board, as well as by program, uh, potential program faculty. So this wasn't simply something that faculty itself developed, but we reached out to the community to help us develop these program outcomes to better reflect the needs and um, wants of the community that we are serving. Uh, and, so, and so that way we, we sort of help want to help foster this, set, this sense of place with, within this program. Uh, so here's just a, a brief overview of some of the courses and research opportunities. This, this course, uh, this prod, this, uh, excuse me, this uh, program, the emphasis is on multidisciplinary learning. Uh, so the courses fall into various realms, including history, political science, economics, philosophy, and natural resources. The program also includes business courses, um, as well as English courses, sustainable development courses. So this program will be drawing on faculty and community expertise in multiple subjects. And one of the ambitions of this project is to develop place-based courses, including sustainability in place, a course on the rhetoric of Menominee termination and restoration, as well as nation building. And Importantly, this program includes a grant writing course so that students will be able to access the kinds of resources that they might need for when they go out into their communities and organizations to, to, so that they will learn how to write grants and obtain these sorts of resources. And because this program is multidisciplinary in its, in its uh, nature, that students will be able to conduct research in many different fields under the guidance of faculty uh, so, so that they can, and these will relate to issues of sustainability in both culture and environment. And, and so we're looking at not, you know, sustainability and not just a, you know, through economic means, but also sustaining and revitalizing resurgence of, of culture. 
Uh, so we're, we're trying to look at sustainability in, in, in a much larger context than, you know, than what you might see as simply environmental. So in addition to the integrative studies program in sustainability, uh, the sustainable agriculture program, again, which was just recently developed, focuses on, on these program outcomes. Uh, so students will describe the agricultural practices of many cultures and how those practice, practices fit in their cultural and ecological contexts. So again, a place-based learning is going to be an integral part of the ag sustainable agriculture program, because of course, people from different cultures are going to be utilizing their own local environments to, to, you know, to best serve their communities. So students will also apply mathematical reasoning, ecological principles, communication skills to analyze the behavior of agroecological systems, food systems, and food business enterprises. Uh, so one of the things that, that we've been doing uh, at CMN and also the Menominee community as a whole is discussing and implementing food sovereignty programs uh, through the use of CMN's community gardens and, and other resources. Uh, so again, the, this program outcome helps, to, helps really to utilize place-based principles uh, in food, you know, in developing more uh, independent food systems and such like that. And finally, uh, to apply ecological and cultural principles to be resilient, to be adaptive, and to be successful in achieving food sovereignty for themselves and future generations. So these programs, uh, as, you, as you note, are pretty ambitious. And again, we, we, are, just, we are just getting started with them. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that, that as we get these programs off the ground, that uh, the faculty and students will be developing in the future really interesting, relevant, and useful uh, research opportunities and projects. Uh, so, so again, uh, the, the Sustainable Agriculture Program is designed to be scaffolded from our Associates in Natural Resources Program. So the students who go into the Bachelor of Science uh, already will have a background in sort of the basics of uh, natural resources. Um, and we are hoping that, that this program along with the ISS program will, will share a number of place-based courses so that students from both programs will be able to coordinate uh, potentially their, their, their research. Uh, and this program will also help to give students a background in sustainable practices in multiple environments uh, so one of the, there's a series of three courses that each sustainable agriculture student will, will, be, will be taking. They are our sustainers in the woods, our sustainers in the fields, and sustainers in the waters. So, so each of these courses will focus on sustainable practices uh, in different kinds of environments. Uh, and like the integrative studies program, hopefully this program will offer numerous research opportunities uh, including many that focus on hands-on work. Uh, and I just give an example from, uh, there, is a lot, there are a lot of projects that involve our community garden, which is based out of our Sustainable Development Institute. Uh, so we're also hoping that these programs will integrate well with many of the other projects that, are, that our uh, campus and our institutes are currently working on. Uh, so then I want to move on to a discussion of Menominee the Menominee pageants. Uh, these were a traditional, uh, a tradition in the, on the Menominee reservation from the 1930s to the 1970s. Um, and I'm gonna actually show you a, a, a brief, hopefully show you a brief video uh, from the documentary series on these pageants. Uh, these pageants were presented for tourists and they told traditional as well as contemporary stories. And they were multimedia presentations that involved music and dance and visuals as well as, as theater. Uh, these, these pageants were presented at the, the Woodland Bowl, 
Bowl, which was constructed by the Civilian Conservation Corps in the mid 1930s. Uh, and this, these projects were, uh, were originally uh, asked, a group of Menominee elders asked Ryan Wynn, our theater faculty person, to help revive the pageant back in 20, 2010. And by 2016, uh, we were able to start working on uh, reconstructing these, these pageants. And so from, from 2016 to the present, uh, these, these pageants have been an ongoing feature uh, for the community. Um, in fact, before the, before the pandemic, uh, they actually took these pageants on short tours. So not only were they presented at uh, the Menominee Woodland Bowl, but they also were presented at the Stockbridge Muncie Reservation uh, in addition to at Oneida. Uh, so these pageants were then sort of uh, exported to, to other local communities. And hopefully this, this, uh, this is a, a brief documentary. It's about three minutes. It's the first part of the revival series. Uh, so hopefully you all will be able to hear it. Eric, does that normally have sound to it? Huh? Does that normally have sound to it? Yeah. Um, so we're not hearing that. There is, um, there's a, a little like box that needs to be clicked that says your audio oh, can- Oh, share, share sound. Okay, there we go. Yes, I think so. Let's try it again. Running nearly every year from 1937 to the early 1970s, the Menominee Pageant showcased traditional theater in the Woodland Bowl in Kashina, Wisconsin. The bowl, as it is known to the community, was built by President Franklin D. Roosevelt's Civilian Conservation Corps in the mid-1930s with the explicit aim of showcasing Menominee theater to non-native tourists. In 1937, FDR's Works Progress Administration funded the creation of the first pageant, staged as the highlight of the August Kashina Fair, thereby launching a tradition that would persist for years to come. Menominee pageants combined act. Oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> and celebrated American Indian lifeways. For decades, Menominee people took part in the annual celebration of this art form, and for generations thereafter, the story of their existence was shared throughout the community. In 2010, elders approached the College of Menominee Nation's theater department, presented tobacco, and asked its faculty to revive the shows. The major problem being that none of the original pageant scripts were housed in the tribe's archives. In 2015, CMN partnered with the Oneida Nation Arts Program to present a show in the Woodland Bowl. But that was just a prelude for what was to come. The following year, against all odds, the college staged one of the classic productions. This video series celebrates the fifth anniversary of the revival of the Menominee pageants. It attempts to capture the value of the art form the efforts of those who willed it to exist again, and CMN's commitment to preserving and perpetuating traditional Menominee theater for the community the college serves. We hope you'll tune in for each episode to learn about one of the exciting, value-based initiatives CMN is honored to support within the Menominee community. It is our hope that you find these episodes both empowering and compelling. But beyond that, we wish that they inspire you to join us in producing traditional Menominee theater for years to come, simply by volunteering to be a part of our efforts.
okay. Oops, hold on. There we go. Um, so as, as, as you can see, the, uh, the, re the recreation of the, the Menominee pageants has, has become a, a, a new tradition, uh, which, is which is absolutely amazing. And you know, hopefully we'll be able to, to continue doing this. Um, so I also just want to go briefly into the redesign of the liberal studies program. Um, so, so this, so this was a as a result of our comprehensive program review, um, and, and so through the through through our through our review, which included a lot of analysis of uh, enrollment and other kinds of data, we determined three goals. And the the first goal, which is hopefully our priority, um, is you know with recognition that the ancest that ancestral language is a core fundamental base in the development of a strong connection. To indigenous identity and well-being, the Liberal Studies Department will develop a plan to restructure Menominee language courses at CMN by fall 2023. Uh, we are also redesigning the program to to uh, eliminate uh, separate interest tracks, uh, and so we wanted to make it more effective and efficient for our students. And in addition, we're hoping to to increase enrollment in in our program. Uh, so. Again, our priority goal for, for this program, for the studies redesign, is to strengthen and regularize the college's language offerings. Uh, because in the, time that, in the time that I have been at the college, uh, I joined in 2010, um, the, the language offerings have always been uh, rather sporadic. We've never had one regular language teacher or a series of language teachers uh, and at least in the Menominee language, we have generally better luck with Oneida. Uh, so this, this has been an ongoing issue uh, at the college and, and we're hoping that we will be able to sort of remedy this. Uh, the project champion is uh, our faculty member, Vicki Bisa, who is a Lukudere Ojibwe. Uh, two of her children are actually involved with Menominee language revitalization efforts. So, so this gives her an in to sort of help us uh, help us rede redesign and regularize our language offerings. And we're also hoping to coordinate our efforts with Menominee U, which is an organization that, that's helping to lead language revitalization, which includes online uh, Menominee language lessons. In my uh, more information slide, I have the, the, the link to, to that, to that uh, organization's webpage. Um, and we are hoping that the program redesign will focus on creating new courses or reviving older courses that continue to emphasize place-based cultural learning. Uh, so for example, this summer, uh, there is a special topics in anthropology course that's centered on the, the annual archeological work on the reservation. And we're hoping to make this a permanent course. Uh, so Dr. David Overstreet and Renee Warrington uh, are they are the ones who are teaching that course? Um, but I'm on the curriculum committee, so so I helped usher that course into into creation. So we're hoping to make that a, an actual permanent summer course. And we also are hoping to revive our Menominee pre-contact and treaty era history courses. In addition to whatever else we 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 come up with <laughs> over the next several years. Uh, and finally. Uh, Briefly, I want to talk about Tiny Earth at CMN, and this is a project that's out of the University of Madison, Wisconsin Institute, Discovery Institute, that focuses on student sourcing antibiotics from the soil. Um, our involvement began in 2018 when we were invited to participate, and at the time we were the only tribal college in this large network of institutions. Uh, and so these, this pro these projects are under the direction of Dr. Lucy Fensel. Uh, and this tiny earth project at CMN has used uh, traditional ecological knowledge of Menominee medicines with modern scientific methods in, in order to help find new antibiotics in the soil on the reservations. And uh, the, the, the project has also involved helping uh, prepare growing plants in space with NASA. 
And the Kashina campus has a phonology trail on, on the campus uh, that has been utilized uh, for these projects. So this is you know, explicitly place-based learning that, that students can then utilize to, well, really benefit potentially the, the entire world. Uh, so briefly, uh, for the future, uh, the academic programs at, that I talked about, again, they are brand new uh, and will be ready to start this academic year. Uh, so I'm hoping that we will be coming back to future convenings, talking about the various projects uh, that, that stem from these. Um, and in addition, uh, a local couple donated 35 acres of their botanical gardens to be converted to an environmental research station. And th that will provide a lot of really exciting opportunities for, for our students and faculty to do research. Um, so the, the Tiny Earth programs and uh, the pageants, they are ongoing projects. Uh, and the same with the liberal studies redesign. So we have a number of areas that, that will generate potentially a lot of interesting, uh, valuable research. And this is more information for various contacts and web pages. Uh, so thank you very much.